my first ever radio TV show, The Rich Eisen Show. I, I always dreamed of interviewing an Indy 500 winner and starting the segment with a Barry Manilow song. Uh, I, I, I always thought that, so my dream comes true. Uh, scratch that off the bucket list is Tony Kanaan, the winner of the Indianapolis 500 from 2013, getting set for the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach that airs uh, 4 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, April 19th on NBC Sports Network. He will be the driver of the number 10 NTT data car for Chip Ganassi Racing. Good to see you here, Tony. Now, I apologize you. for the Barry Mantle introduction. It's because Mike who, Del Tufo who, might... who picks the song? Well, he went to the... <laughs> <laughs> Mike Del Tufo, who's, who's cackling in our ears right now. So you um, have no control of that. Well, I do, I do, but sometimes uh, this asylum is run by somebody else. Good. And he went to a Barry Manilow concert last night. If you had to choose to go to a, a, a concert, who would you choose? Who would you go? Would not, not, not him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Let's scratch that question off for Tony Kanaan. So, uh, how, how are you doing? Let's, good, let's start good. off with that. Glad to be here. We just, uh, you know, I just got into town for the race this weekend, and uh, glad to be on your show. I watch it all the time. Oh, great! Thank yeah. you for saying that. I appreciate that. What is it like zipping around Long Beach? In your car, I mean, Southern California setting like Long Beach. What is I mean, that like? it's it's weird if you think about it, right? It's a street course, so basically, you're going 180, 200 miles an hour between walls as fast as you can, and you know some people can relate to that. The locals, for instance, they go, "Well, we go through the streets at 45 miles an hour every day." So, some of them probably a little faster than that, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, but I know what you're but, saying. Yeah. But it's a it's a, a very technical circuit for us because mm -hmm. there is no margin of error there. There are walls, both sides. The, the track is extremely fast. It's a beautiful scenario as well. As far as a, as a street race, mm -hmm. for me, it's my favorite one because of, you know, all the, you have the beach there, you have the water, the ocean right beside the track. Sure. The, whole, the whole thing, it's, uh, it's fascinating. And then obviously the, the, the Grand Prix, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's old, it's, it's very traditional no in, doubt. in our circuit. So. No doubt, but you can't be, you know, sightseeing when you're going as fast as you're going. No, you don't time, have time you know? for that, no. but uh, obviously the, the, the whole environment, the fans, the, the, the whole town, it's, it's up for it because the race has been going on for so long. But yeah, I don't have a lot of time to do anything, really. No, but when, you're, when you are on a more traditional course, what is it like to go as fast as you're driving? Can you exp explain it to somebody like myself, it, Tony? Yeah, well, it's kind of like a mix of being on a ro roller coaster, but you're in control of it mm -hmm. as far as, you know, the G-forces. And, and, you know, it's it's a very unique, it's really hard to explain. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you've been you've been on that late before, you know how to exceed your limits. And then the thing is, at a racetrack, you're not depending only on yourself, right? And mm -hmm. in football or basketball, it's like if you haven't trained, it's... If you let yourself down, you let yourself down there. Sure. You're depending on a team, on a machine. So driving the car, sometimes, the, for me, the best feeling of driving fast, it's, it's just like, it's the speed. That's what gets, gets me going. Right. Uh, Tony Kanaan is here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, at Tony Kanaan on Twitter. So, uh, w and what is it like winning the Indianapolis 500? I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Nah. Can, you, can you explain what the feeling is for that? Uh, so it's, Tony? it's like winning the Super Bowl, right? It's, it's your dream as a little kid. If, if you're involved in racing, that's the race you want to win. And Growing up in Brazil? That's growing what growing up in Brazil, watching that, you know, f from home with my dad, that was always the race. You know, it's, it's the glamour of, you know, your name is going to go uh, with, with, it's going to become a part of a, a hundred or so names or legends on, on motorsports. Your face gets to go in a trophy mm -hmm. forever. Your car gets to the museum and is gonna stay there. So for me, you know, watching with dad, you know, obviously the prize money was it, back in the days it used to be a million dollars. So sure. it's like, oh my God, it's uh, and, and 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 it was always a race that I want to win. And then obviously I started to have the opportunity to race, and it took me 13 years to do it. Mm -hmm. you know, up until 2013, I had led eight out of my 10 attempts. I led more than the entire race, but not the right lap and, until then. So it was a it was a journey, and, and, and I enjoyed it a lot. I, I was glad that uh, happened when it happened. My kid, my, my oldest kid is seven years old, and I actually had a bet with him mm. that I was going to win the race, and then I did. So, How great is that? It's, you know, it, the, the story itself. What is the bet, Rick, though? What do you, what the do you, bet what was do you he kind of told me that uh, back in the days, he was actually four years old. He said, listen, Dad, I don't see you winning a lot. 
you know, and you know how kids are. <laughs> and I'm they, like, they will just say stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The story's a little longer than that, but actually, he sure. got beaten in a go kart race with me. We raced together. He was in go karting. Okay. And he hated it that. And I tried to explain it to him that he's going to lose a lot more than he was going to win in life, especially if he's going to become an athlete. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, because you, you know a lot about losing that. Oh, you know, boy. I don't remember you winning a lot. So I said, I'm going to win the biggest race of, of, of the year or the biggest race in the world. And I'm going to give you that trophy and you're going to put it in your nightstand. So when you wake up in the morning, you're going to look at that and you're going to remember that I won. And until you do it, that's it. And actually the trophy, he has it in his nightstand. You put it on his nightstand. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. And then, you know, you met your wife in through Indianapolis, racing. Yeah. through racing in Indianapolis. So you have a second home yes. in Indianapolis. Yeah, you we, call that a, a home for you, Tony Kanaan, Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, the race shop, it's there. Uh, mm -hmm. Her and Tyler family is there. So we do have a, a place in Indy. We okay. actually, after this race, we actually moved through the summer. All the races are close to, to the Midwest, so sure. we're going to move to Indy for three months, and we stay there. So we do that every year. So uh, and and that means you have to be a Colts fan if you're sitting. Yeah, there. Right. I mean, I mean uh, you know, coming from Brazil, football, American football, it's not. Well, your football thing. in Brazil. We're, we're I soccer, mean, come on. football, and, yeah. and so obviously, when I first came here, I had no clue. What I, I said, what are these people that one guy throws the ball and the other one has to run and it's a touchdown? That yeah. was all I it could It can be understand. really confusing, Tony, this but, idea. But is, yeah. I got really, when she started to explain it to me, I, I, I got fascinated and I'm, I'm really like a big football fan now. And uh, being Indy, I got to meet Peyton Manning. There you go. We did a couple uh, charity events together. Uh, and the years passed when he was playing for the Colts, then there is no way you can't like Manny. So I became a Colts fan. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Manny leaves, so I kind of like in between Denver and... and, and yeah, and, and you do Colts. realize, though, that normally when somebody of Peyton Manning's stature leaves, somebody of Andrew Luck's stature rarely comes right away. This is This is... As good as it gets. I think NFL so, and then I don't think it was by luck. Obviously, I believe that at some point, mm -hmm. some people knew Luck's, mm -hmm. you know, capabilities as well. Because to trade Manny, especially, I mean, that press conference that he did. I mean, I. Uh, yeah, I remember that. I cried myself. Like I was like, it was hard not to. It's unbelievable. It's almost four years ago now. Yeah. It's really how time flies. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a break here with uh, Tony Kanan, and when we come back, your phone calls, Iron Man competition. Sylvester Stallone. These things are all going to be discussed. <laughs> and for the television audience and for the radio audience, you can see it on richeisenshow.com. The DirecTV 100 RC cars out in our thoroughfare behind the set. Us three against you, Tony. I'm ready. Okay. And what's going to happen is you win that, you put the trophy on your son's night table for that too. Deal. Okay. Back with more in 60 seconds. 844204 Rich, you want to talk to Tony Kanan. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. 844204 Rich is the number to dial if you'd like to chat with uh, Indy 500 champion from uh, 2013, uh, Tony Kanan, who will be in the driver's seat of the number 10 NTT data car for Chip Ganassi racing on the 41st Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach this weekend for Eastern Sunday, April 19th on NBCSN. How often are you a passenger in a car, Tony? I'm not. Actually, I. Uh, what do you mean? I'm the worst passenger. I, I like <laughs> the hardest thing I had to do this morning. Right. Was to take a car service a car service to come here. I usually don't do that. Uh, if uh, I'm with my PR people or my wife or anybody, I'm always driving, and uh, so, I will never when, valet my cars. So if you're a pa just somehow find it in the shotgun seat, do you tell people how how do you handle? Do you tell people no, turn I, here, turn there? Are you no, bad backseat driver? No, I get sick what? actually uh, because I can't obviously. Sick. Yeah, like I get motion sick. I get car sick because car you're sick. not driving. Yeah. Did you think about telling the, the driver of the car service, get in the back seat, I'll drive? I've actually done it once. Uh, back in Brazil, <laughs> I landed in the airport, and I was in a hurry. Yeah. And obviously, people know me very well down there. And the cab driver says, man, I can't believe I have Tony Kanan here. I said, and you're going to do something for me. Can I drive your cab? Because... We're in a hurry, so I, I did drive it. You did? We took a picture, he I posted he it on did. Twitter, and uh, it, was a funny, it was a funny story. But yeah. yeah, like this morning coming here, I could tell my driver 15 or 20 opportunities that he missed for us to get here quicker. But I... <laughs> <laughs> it's only two miles away, too, right? That's Not true. Even. That was, but it was the roads were closed for something, so uh, I was like, dude, oh, yeah. just pass this guy. Come on. Come on, so, this, guy, this guy does uh, not know how to navigate Sepulveda. 
is essentially what he's saying. So maybe I probably have a future. You know, maybe if you ever need a driver to drive you to the show, I'll, and when I retire, I can we can do that. Tony, uh, we can arrange that. If, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think you could probably have a little bit more on your plate when you want to when you want to hang up the wheel or whatever you would, might call it. So the uh, Iron Man in Kona, beautiful. What it's a beautiful place, Kona, Hawaii. You awesome. you participated in this. A yeah, few years ago. That what was, was, a, that was like? a challenge that I made for myself. Obviously, I'm in a sport that I depend on a team, on a race car, and a thousand pieces on the car that can break, and you're not going to achieve your goal. And mm -hmm. Ironman was just me. So I started doing it to train to be fit for the race car, although some people don't think race car uh, drivers are athletes. And I got an invitation by the Ironman people to do the race, which mm -hmm. was, you know, it's the Indy 500, it's the Super Bowl for the Ironman because it's a race that you only qualify, and then it was uh, one of my best experiences yeah, in life. Yeah, 2.4-mile swim, and then, of course, the marathon, 26.2 miles, and then a 112-mile bike ride. Bike ride. It was but the longest day of my life. Is it the toughest thing you ever done? Yeah, 12 hours and 30 minutes oh, I did it. Lord. And, uh, you know, that g actually, some people don't understand. I did that to train my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I think now nowadays, oh, when I'm in a 500-mile race, a car race, yep. and then I'm thinking I have a long, I'm having a long day when you don't have a good car, that gave me a prospect of a long day. Huh. Uh, Chris in Flint, Michigan, you're on with Tony Kanan. Chris in Flint, Michigan, you're on the Rich Eisen show. You there, Chris? I'm sorry, Chris. My Chris got on the phone while I was going to you. You there, Chris? Uh, yes, I am. How are you, Chris? Good. How are you? I'm great. So, what's your question for Tony Kanan? Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm a big F1 uh, racing fan, and just uh, wondering if he ever uh, had a chance to meet Ayrton Senna, the, you know, probably one of the best uh, Brazilian drivers ever. Yeah, as, actually, Chris, I did. Um, he was a good friend of mine. He helped me when I was in Europe growing up to get one of my rides, and uh, unfortunately, for the people that are not familiar with Formula One, he died in 1993 with uh, in a big uh, Formula One accident. But uh, he was actually, and he is still my uh, racing hero nowadays. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, he was. Uh, he was unbelievable. I watched him, you know, just a little bit. I was kind of younger when he was racing, but I mean, yeah, he was. That guy was unbelievable. Right, probably, probably one of the best F1 ever. For sure, and they have a movie that came out. Actually, people can watch it uh, to, to learn, learn a little bit more about about him. But uh, he was. He's definitely my my racing hero. Chris, thanks for calling in to the Rich Eisen Show with Tony Kanon. Speaking of movies. <laughs> you know where I'm going on this one, don't you? <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, a, a certain. Uh, a certain. Uh, uh, film on the silver screen, <laughs> Driven with Sly Stallone. Yeah. And you were in that film. Yeah. Driven with Sly, Burt Reynolds, come on, man. Gina Gershon, Estella Warren, kind of hot. Super what was that stars. all about for you with Sly? Did you get to meet him and hang with him? Yeah, it, act, was, it was. Act with Sly. I mean, it was crazy, right? Because mm -hmm. they're doing this movie about IndyCar and they invite some of the drivers. And the question, the producers came to have a meeting with us and they said, look, for the driver scene, we were looking for what drivers do before the race. Right. right. How do you get to prepare? And I said, look, I really, what I do, it's I take a nap <laughs> half an hour before the race. So my scene in the I'm movie, the it's me laying in the sofa in the truck, sleeping. So it's a sleeping scene. I didn't speak. I had my eyes closed the entire time. <laughs> I was 20 years old, so I thought I was the man. I just came to America. I'm this famous race car driver in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I'm an Indy car driver. Now I'm in a movie with Stallone. Yeah. I'm going to meet Stallone, you know, like the guy, I'm like, the guy's probably seven foot tall, this big. And I meet yeah. the guy, he's shorter than me. I'm like, uh, <laughs> is that Rocky? Rocky <laughs> Bobo, are you sure? You could take him. <laughs> Easy, especially on the race car. So, and then I'm telling all my friends, I'm going to be in the movie. And obviously we don't know that. Producers, they say, we come to the premiere. I'm excited to see my name under the, you uh -oh. know, the, the, and then the, here I am. Honestly, I was exactly like this. Sleeping. Sleeping, That's it. but I think I can win an Oscar. Well, for I mean, you. Sleeping scene? No, I mean, in terms of uh, a race car driver playing a race car driver sleeping, nobody can touch you, Tony. Nope. Nobody can that touch you. That will never be An Oscar for again. Tony <laughs> is essentially what I'm saying. An Oscar for Tony. For Tony Kanon. I love it. Good, st I mean, you know, Marshall Falk napped before games. He, uh, what is what? How can you sleep? Why, why would you just, nap? You get in the zone and just re try to relax before you go to. Should I do that for this show, guys? Should I nap in the half hour before this show? There's so many jokes there, Rich, but I'm just going to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony, are you ready to race here on the thoroughfare? Yeah, but so RC there is cars? no practice or anything. We got to go straight to the race. But you guys already raced. There's no. So. Oh, no, I, actually, I took my nap for this. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. We'll, Deal. Have a, Let's do it. we'll have a couple of minutes of practice in the commercial break before the television audience comes back. For the radio audience, uh, go and see this man race on NBC SN this Sunday at 4 Eastern time. He will be the one in the number 10 NTT data car for Chip Ganassi Racing. Tony Kanon, thanks for coming on Thank the show. Thank you. Bud. appreciate it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.